We're now deep into the rainy season and our focus here at the farm has shifted to field crops. What are field crops? They are agricultural crops that are grown at a large scale. We're talking about maize, sorghum, millet, rice, wheat, and other cereals. We're talking about sunflower, tobacco, and also legumes like groundnuts, dry beans, and soya beans. Last season, we grew soya beans at our farm for the very first time, and we did about two hectares across the farm. Now, that might seem like a very small quantity uh, area for the farm the size of ours, but what we believe is that whenever we start a new crop, we've got to start pangono pangono, mbichana mbichana. You don't start a new crop and go all out when you don't exactly know what you're doing. You're still doing your research and your learning. So the two hectares that we grew last year, it was quite successful. Most importantly, it gave us some lessons. We learned about soya beans. We learned how to prepare the seed, how to plant the seed, how to look after the soya beans themselves, how to feed it, what kind of nutrients go into a good soya beans crop, how to protect it over the weeks and months that it's in the field. Finally, when it was ready, we learned how to harvest it. We then threshed for the very first time and Finally, we took it to market and made a little bit of money. So this season, we have dramatically increased the hectareage of soya beans that we've grown across the farm. I'm talking hectares and hectares, people. We're going to be sharing with you a series of videos about our soya beans crop for the year. We're gonna start at the very beginning. What is soya beans? Why do we grow soya beans? Why do you make the decision to grow it instead of something else? We're gonna talk about how we prepare the land. We're going to talk about how we actually prepare the seed and how we actually plant it. In other videos, we're going to be talking about the feeding or nurturing of the, of the soya beans as it is in the ground and also constantly looking at various soya beans at different stages of, that we have across the farm. Stay with us. Greetings from the farm. My name is Chisha Folotia, and I'm so glad to have you back with us here again on the Mondo Farms channel. On this channel, we share videos about things that we do, the plants that we grow, and other uh, agronomic practices that we carry out here on our farms on the outskirts of Chongwe. We're about 50 k's east of Lusaka. So let's talk about soya beans. What is soya beans? But before I start, first of all, soya beans and soybeans are exactly the same thing. The names are used interchangeably depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on. The scientific name for soya beans is Glycine Max. Soya beans is a species of legume native to East Asia, but now grown all over the world for its edible bean. The soya bean is economically the most important bean in the world, and it provides vegetable protein to billions of people on the planet, as well as being used in chemical processes for hundreds and hundreds of products. The two main uses of soya beans are for oil and for food. The seed contains 17% oil and 63% meal, 50% of which is protein. Soya beans oil can be used for cooking and is also processed into margarine. And I was amazed to read recently that the oil is used in hundreds and hundreds of industrial processes. It is used as an ingredient in paints, adhesives, fertilizers, sizing for cloth, linoleum backing, and fire extinguisher fluids, amongst other products. Soya beans is eaten and consumed in many, many different ways around the world. I bet you wherever you are over the last week, you have eaten soya beans directly or indirectly or eaten something that was fed with a product from soya beans or anything like that. Here in Zambia, we traditionally used to use soya beans as one of the components in making animal feed. Now, especially with all that protein, right? Now, you can't think of a better way of beefing up your uh, cattle, your chickens, your pigs or your fish. But more recently, soya beans has begun to feature more directly in people's diets. They process it in a form of uh, ndio, which we call soya chunks or nyama soya.
There are two main reasons why we choose to grow soya beans on our farm. Number one, the price. After all, remember, we are farming to make money. Farming is a business. We keep saying that over and over again. The price of soya beans has been something that has been able to give many farmers around the world a reasonable return. Remember all those things that soya beans is used for and how much, how important a source of protein it has become for us around the world and even here in Zambia. So the price has remained relatively steady and it is not really subject to you know, interference and stuff like that, the market price is ready to take whatever soya beans and the price has been relatively good. Number two, soybeans is a legume. As many of you know by now, leguminous crops help farmers by fixing nitrogen into the soil. So soybeans has become part of the crop rotation for a lot of farmers around the world, and it is used to help them save on fertilizer costs in future. Now a quick bit of history. From the time we started farming here in Chongwe, I always knew that I wanted to grow leguminous crops. In fact, let's be fair, I knew that I needed to grow leguminous crops. And the reason for that is monocropping. By now, most of the soils that we have in this area and across most of Africa, I would say, have been extensively monocropped with a cereal crop. Here in Zambia, people grow maize every single year. And maize really sucks out the nitrogen from your soils. So I knew that we needed to grow a leguminous crop. I'm kind of from the north. My name is Chisha, which means I'm from those people that like to eat beans. There's nothing I love better than a bit of nshima with kabulangeti. So we started growing some beans and we started growing some groundnuts. Here we are at Westgate. Uh, it's early evening, end of another long day. It's coming up to 18 hours. Uh, just having a quick, quick, quick look at the crops here at Westgate on my own. Um, this is the field of beans, bunga bunga beans that were planted. Uh, and here are the groundnuts. Groundnuts are looking amazing. We had uh, been weeding them this week. So, Everything's weeding and doing a bit of healing of them. These were literally planted. Let's have a look at the poster, the field poster here. Did you plant on Christmas Day? Christmas Day. Yeah. And it's now end of Feb, so we're getting to a time when it gets close to starting to harvest. Let's see. Weeding never stops at the farm. If I'm able to do something about this visitor here that's uh, come and he's a little bit too close to my children and he comes out one time. What is that? Who are you? What do you want? And I can see you've got some uh, spots and lesions on you. They do say that a lot of these weeds bring other insects and stuff with them so you've got to keep your gardens <coughs> very clean <clears throat> yeah the weeding was done this week and it's looking absolutely beautiful i love it i started off the farm with field crops with veg crops sorry should i say uh mid of last year we planted our first um cabbage crop in june during deep lockdown, almost sort of accidental, almost sort of like it's lockdown. What are we going to do? We have all this land. Let's get on with it. And the farm has really grown and developed over the last couple of months. We are now reaching the height of the summer uh, field crop planting season. And yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm really, really looking at the amount of money that I I have put into this farm with my own money. It's crazy. It's literally crazy. And it's really had an effect on my cash flows. But at my age, 50, you have to look at the future and look at developing. We're really looking at developing this farm, making it into something, you know, viable. Hopefully in a year or two, we'll be able to class ourselves as commercial. 
That's something I really, really, really look forward to. When does a farm become commercial? I don't know. Is there a magic number of uh, money you make or tons of tonnage of crops that you do? Or I don't know. When do you become an adult? 13 or 18. Thinking too much as usual. So we've got the granites here. We've got beans on this side. The beans are looking super well as well. Uh, it's been a nice day of slow, steady rainfall, as you expect in uh, this part of Africa around the end of February. February is our peak rainfall month. After this, it starts tailing off. Let's have a very quick look at some of the beans. We should be harvesting here in a couple of weeks. This is looking good. And the returns of those particular crops over those years, mm, nah, 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 nah. Ah, the returns that we got when we took our beans or our granules to market, it wasn't very encouraging. So I was so excited when I discovered soya beans. <laughs> now, I say discovered the way they say in some circles that David Livingston discovered the Mutsotunia. <laughs> now, you can't discover something that's always been there. Other farmers knew all about soya beans, but I've only learned about it recently. Now, I'm sure you've heard the expression, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. In all the businesses that I run, whenever we're doing a new venture or a new project, we try to do as much planning and preparation as possible. Here at Mondo Farms, if we're talking about planning for rain season crops, then you need to be doing your planning a long time in advance, way before the rains actually come, which for us here in South Central Africa is around about November. So for the rain season crops here, by September, we were already walking around the farm and deciding which crops we would grow in which fields during the rainy season. If you take an example of Florida, there's a new area that we're planting, we planted this year called Florida. And what we saw was that it had been extensively monocropped over the years and the soils were sandy and, you know, they had just been putting maize there, occasionally a little bit of tomato. And we knew that this was a place that needed to have soya beans. Now down by the river. Down by the river. Down by the river side. <laughs> Stop. Ooh, this thing's hurt. It's these horrible blue brown turquoise things. Damn, they hurt. So the first part of our plan was to work on the land and bring it up to the standards that we want here at Mondo Farms. Now we had three main objectives. Number one was to level the fields as much as possible, including bringing down some anthills. You find anthills all over the place and sometimes when fields have been traditionally cleared in the past, the anthill was almost impossible for them to clear. So the TLB is able to come along and, re and reduce the anthill and, and achieve your level playing field. <laughs> Just a level playing field. Speaking of levels, we also do some cut and fills. Sometimes your field is like sloping down like this, and then we can sort of take some from the top and bring it down here at the bottom to achieve a much more level uh, field, which is much easier to work on. Number two, we had to remove some tree stumps. Now, a lot of the fields traditionally cleared, they can't go in and stump the, 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 the actual tree stump once they cut the tree for whatever reason they've cut it. So you'll find a lot of fields have got tree stumps right in the middle. Tree stumps and tractors and plows and harrows, they are not friends. So we do try and go in and remove the tree stumps as much as possible. 
And our third objective was to try and make the fields have a regular shape. Now, you don't, you want your field to be like this, right? Equal distance. You don't want it to be like this and then come down. So wherever possible, it's better. We find it's better anyway to be able to make it straight. So when, the, when you're plowing, when you're spraying everything, you just go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You don't have to be doing all these sorts of things. Ah, I'm a bit OCD about this type of thing and I want my fields to be as rectangular and straight and have shapes as possible. It's just the way I am. And where's the road? La peces. Mas mm-hmm. mwaka mbati chiku ngale straight na shimtengo shi just mame. Aha. Then manje tizenda tipelele kushanga kuja konse ulo tizasi ya koko. No, no. Me, I'm stopping it here. We're trying to decide in that at corner, yeah, it's a block to here. Then you pass along, at the at the forest, at the side of the cavalry, at the all the things you saw. Also, is that Sarah sees to is that the forest so jumpy? Next question, road is good. Road is good. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if a thing is good, say you feel it. You go so far, in a few days. Next question in the road, don't I? Road that's the same. Hello? Do you straighten it? Mm-hmm. Boundaries. Many years ago, we learned that it's much easier and more effective to use earth-moving machinery to work on the land. It can be done manually, I've been saying, but that takes much longer and is usually more expensive in the long run. So by the middle of November, we had hired the TLBs to come back to the farm and start doing the land preps. Finias, if Thank <laughs> you. 
Tipo Florida Florida to Papua Nyachi Antio Soy Yantio, Vasiliza. Number one, two, and number two. And over the next few weeks, the TLBs worked hard across the farm and they were able to do a wonderful job in terms of getting the fields ready for us to think about starting to bring in some crops. So one of your main issues is saying, if that's block A or whatever, yale kate, stop uh -huh. it there. Then you need to leave this chinomans here as a drainage for this guy. Then start the next block there. As in leave? How many? It's about 20, 10 meters. For water? This car area here, can you see it? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Then see where does the next block start? The next serious block. This horribly undulating land is terrible. But give me an idea. Um, I think 10 is too big. We can go for five. So that means that, that that's a that's a musango. 
Yes. The, so the field would come in here, up to where? So from, from the Msangu to where, I think it's already made, to where this sort of ridge is. Now, that means you have to divert that water to come round through there. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we have to dig it manually because the TLB can't reach here. Yeah, we can. Yeah? yeah. Now, guys, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's no TLB here, no. as far as we... Yeah. Unless you make that road, needs versus wants. A TLB can come. How? Uh, but it can't work. There's a difference. It can oh. come because... It, it made this word when it went and uh, helped this guy uh, when he had a flat battery to jumpstart him. Yes, that day you told me. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. So, but the actual way it holds, holds the pushes. Yeah, it can't. What about digging? Uh, it's the same thing because it has to like. So in the stilts, whatever those uh -huh. whatever. I'm seeing. You see that guy actually comes there, or do we bring him round? Again, what we're trying to avoid is him cutting across the field. Which one? The water? The, the, the same uh, drainage. There's nothing you can do. Can you? Because you're going to get water from that to, to the river. But the diversion can work. Where? Where like the way it is, because we, ha we have two, basically. We have that one there and that one there, so they can meet there. Okay. The small one feeds into the bigger one. This is a bigger one. Yeah. Wow, that's a big guy. The other issue is the depth of the drainage. It doesn't have to be a ditch, like a one meter. -ish. No. It just has to be a shallow, like a spoon, as long as it guides the water, the water across. I was watching something like that on Ag PhD. Because big fields always have stuff like this. Yeah. Okay. Florida two, Florida one block A. You know how I'm talking about that. Yeah. So by the beginning of December, the fields were ready for the tractors to come in and plow. And so the next thing is to hire some tractors, right? No, this is it. Nothing is ever easy. If you're trying to hire a tractor here in Chongwe in the first week of December, it's not that straightforward and it might be a little bit more difficult than you first imagined. Hello, hello, Bwanji. Hello, 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 Bwanji. Hello, 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 bro. What are you doing? Bruno, Bruno. You are not You are not You are not You are not Oh, so you are not You are Ima moni kuti apa? Apa ni pasu varest? Pasu varest? So he's not with the tractor. But he sounds like he has a tractor. Yeah, but he gave it a number to someone else. I think so. With another tractor. I should think so. You need to try and catch him in the evening. Yes. Yeah. Or oh, unless we just continue with what we have, then continue next week. 
Ya la vi. Look, option one is saying, we have enough plowed fields to at least put the first crops on the ground. Yes, sir. From there, down to there, go, go Florida one, A, eh, Korea. Yes, sir. Yeah? All of two and three is done. Super. Uh -huh. You've got Versailles six as well. Versailles five will come and do it. Uh -huh. Next, that's done. Alaska. Yeah. Alaska. So Alaska one and four done. Yeah. Then three is remaining. That's right. Yes, and yeah. we'll come and plant three later. Later. Then Canada. The Canada, it's for the sorghum. That's right. That's the only thing that's left, but the maize part is done. So in part. summary, this coming next five, six, seven days, we'll push what work we can. Then yeah. we'll come and plant more. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, serenity prayer. What's the serenity prayer again? Huh? Lord, give me the, the something. The grace to handle what I can do something about. Then there's something. The wisdom to know, there's something, the, the patience to know what I can't do anything about. And then the, 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 the wisdom to know the difference. Oh, yeah. It's like a funny prayer, but it's very, very key. Funny, Keeps but your key. mind key. screwed up. Yeah. You're saying some shit just can't be helped. Anyway, we finally managed to get some tractors to come in and plow the various fields across the farm with some pushing and pulling and having to pay much higher prices than we had ever anticipated and deal with people that we had never dealt with before. We knew that we had a lot of fields that needed to be worked on and we just had to do whatever it takes. That is farming. The plowing Alaska. Yeah, block four. Alaska. Block three. So After the tractoring, it was now time to start planting the seeds. Wait, we're gonna cover the planting of the seed in the next video in this series. Uh, but before I go, if you are liking what you're watching, please give us a big like, the thumbs up button below there. And if you wanna keep watching more of these and getting told when the next video is ready, the easiest way to do that is to press the subscribe button. 
And if you press the bell icon, YouTube will notify you when a, vi when a new video comes along. You can also share this video on some of your WhatsApp groups or Facebook groups for with other people who want to know more about how and why we plant soya beans. And you can also comment below. Tell us some of the experiences that you've had and why you plant soya beans. My name is Joseph Oletia. See you soon. Shalini Bye-bye.